All right, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Make sure you check out all of our sponsors. Uh, we got uh, Defense Coordinator One, which is uh, an app that you use, lets you use live in-game data uh, to make adjustments on the field so you can chart things live, use that data to make adjustments on the field so that you understand what they're calling, what they're calling, how it's working, how certain things have worked, as opposed to haven't worked, personnel versus personnel, field boundary, uh, runs, passes, everything that you've charted in your tendencies leading in, now you can use live in-game data to make yourself some uh, crucial adjustments um, on the sideline while it's happening in between series. You can use it on offense or on defense. Max One, which is an app uh, which streamlines all of your organization, communication, and workouts into one app. So you can set up your organization with your dates and workouts and calendars, and then you can set up your communication with your team. So if you got any fundraisers coming up, camps coming up, or any changes in dates or times coming up, or weather that, that may change what you're doing, you can uh, put that all on the same app, and then you could have your workouts for your players uh, all on that app. So you can have different players doing different workouts. They can get the workout from their phone. You don't have to have 10 different workouts written on the board. And then at the same time, if <clears throat> maybe somebody had to miss in the summer, going out of town for a week or two, which normally happens in high school, they can still have a workout that they can do. They can pull the workout up right on their phone. They can do it if there's somewhere for them to do it while they're on vacation. All right, uh, GameStrat, which is sideline replay system we use. Uh, if you're looking for a reliable and affordable sideline replay system, I highly suggest use GameStrat. Great customer service, great guys. Um, helped us tremendously last year, and uh, we love the system. Uh, we'll use it again next season. All right, and then uh, Just Play Football, who is who we use, I use when I do diagrams for webinars or any clinics that I speak at. Um, don't use it for a full playbook to share with our players yet because I'm not really a playbook guy. I don't trust where my playbook ends up, um, and I don't print anything out to give to the kids. So I'm looking into next year maybe doing something with the playbook and game plans and scouting reports and uh, using uh, Just Play Football for how they – uh, allow you to use your, your software to quiz players about the game plan, quiz players about uh, your, your playbook and other things where you can set up questions that the players have to answer online. So I'm looking into that feature next year, but I really love it to diagram uh, any plays when I'm doing webinars or speaking at clinics, I use it. So um, also uh, at Dome Hats, which is a local hat company here in Jacksonville, uh, custom quality hats, beanies, visors, uh, for, founded by two former Florida Gator football players and guys that have coached a little bit themselves, so they understand the coaching business, they understand high school football business, um, and they work with uh, everybody outside of high school football. They're not just working with high school football, but they're former football players, former coaches, so they are guys that uh, really like helping coaches out, so check out Dome Hats. All right, today we're going to do a, a video on, on how we go from the stack front to the tight front. I know the tight front has been the craze the last year or two, um, especially in the Big 12, especially with schools like Iowa State. Uh, a lot of schools now to stop spread teams are going to the tight front, and I'm going to show you how we go from our stack front to the tight front and how we use it um, for our guys because uh, we have to understand that when we go from our stack front to the tight front, we got to keep run fits the same. we got to make sure that everybody understands where to fit. It's really important to me that our guys understand how to uh, fit runs consistently over and over again, and we teach them how to do that. So. Um, when we play our 3-3 stack front, one of the reasons we went to the front is not only uh, because it fits our personnel, not only because we don't have to find as many D linemen, we have more linebackers and safeties at our school. One of the reasons we went to it is for the simplicity of the front and the reads and, and how we tie everything together to make those reads. It allowed us last year to play not only faster, but to play a little bit um, you know, simpler all right, to where our guys didn't have to overthink anything and we could read very simple keys and cues and really get after what we were doing. And last year in our county, we led, uh, we led our county in rushing yards against, passing yards against, total yards against, points allowed. So um, really with uh, one defensive end that has a couple, um, two Division One offers and a bunch of the one AA offers, and then a couple other good high school seniors that just graduated and aren't playing college football and a couple other kids that have a chance maybe to play uh, smaller college football. So it's not like we were running around with, eight Division I players. So what we did worked for us. It worked with a smaller group um, where we weren't physically as imposing at the D-line and linebacker level, and it allowed us to fit runs consistently uh, to force people to kind of do some other things, throw the ball on us, which is right in the wheelhouse of where we want to be in high school football. So for us in the 3-3 stack, we tie 
All right, our our what we call our linebacker and our end we tie together, our nose and our mic we tie together, our anchor and our, all right, what we call our ram, all right, linebacker, we tie those guys together. So in other words, they all have something very similar that they're reading and something that they're fitting, so they all fit off of each other so that, you know, the idea for us, all right, especially against, you know, not only spray teams, but when you're trying to defend a run, the idea for us is we want to get that flat wall in the ABC gap, make sure we have a player in each gap. We want to be able to defend option teams, all right? We want to be able to be sound in the option play so that we understand how we're playing option, all right? And then when we start to pressure and move a little bit, then we'll change how we play option teams with who the edge guys are. But in our base package, we try not to change too much because we want our guys to see a stimulus, all right, react to a block very quickly and understand how we need to react to the block that we're reading, and then we get into block destruction and making tackles and all the good stuff. But you can't get into that unless you put yourself in position to make plays. All right, so what we do real simply with our with our ends, all right, our end and our anchor, what we do is, is we've got really, in the run game, in our run fits, we've really got two things that we're looking at. All right, any blocks that are inside, veer release blocks, okay, our defensive end is going to be a squeeze, chase, fill player. All right, so if we get any inside veer release blocks, if it's two back, if there's a puller, anything that's happening, we're going to spill, okay? Um, my defensive end that has the Division One offers is a dent player, not a spill player, so I'm not going to ask him the wrong arm spill, take himself out of place because he's a real good football player. So he's going to dent the inside half of a body real thick, and then he's going to try and separate, all right, and kind of shock and shed that block with his helmet where it belongs so that he either makes a play or the ball bounces one or the other, but what he's not going to do is he's not going to completely turn and wrong arm to spill the ball because I don't want to take him out of plays because he's a real good player. On the other side, those ends will probably have to spill. They're young kids um, and they're not as big yet and not as strong yet, so in order for them to get the ball where I needed to go, I probably need to physically turn and wrong arm real hard those blocks to get the ball spilled. They can't dent yet. Dent yet. They're just not physical enough, strong enough, good enough players yet, so they'll probably spill. All right, so for argument's sake, though, whether we're spilling or denting, any inside beer release blocks, we are going to squeeze, spill, or chase a one-back system where we are chasing the dive and the, the stack backer is going to be all right, a quarterback play. So our stack backers, any veer releases or inside blocks, they are going to stack tight to the outside of the defensive end, and they're going to get ready to play the quarterback on poles, the C-gap on any things that spill to us. Okay, so we're squeezing and taking away the B-gap here. We're going to play stack defensive end to play the C gap there, but it's very important you stack tight to the hip of the defensive end so that you can fix him if he's wrong. If that end, for whatever reason, okay, gets kicked out or doesn't squeeze, you want the backer behind him to be able to fix that and adjust and fit back inside. Second level players fix first level players, third level players fix second level players. So we want this end on these inside bureau releases to get real tight and stacked to that defensive end and be able to play the C-gap or the quarterback pull, but at the same time, we also want him to be able to adjust back into the B-gap if our ends, all right, especially our younger kids, if they got up the field and kicked out or if they, for whatever reason, didn't execute their assignment, we need to fix it behind them. All right, so on that beer release block, we're assuming that we are going to be an inside B-gap player, spill player, chase player, and we assume that we are going to be a stack C-gap player. Okay, same thing on the other side, it, it, nothing changes for us, any beer releases inside, all right, anything that goes down inside, we are going to be a squeeze, chase, spill player, and we are going to be a stack, C-gap fitter, quarterback player in the option game, okay. Any base blocks or out blocks, all right, even if they're reach blocks, we really don't care, all right, anything that works out at the defensive end, the end's going to win in the C-gap right now. So any block that works out towards them. Now, obviously... All right. As you start going through ND and block rec and different things, you got to show them that a base block is different, all right, than, than a reach block. But the bottom line is anything that works out at us here, all right, that's going to make us win in the C gap. And now we got a bench press separate with our helmet in the C gap, all right, right now on any blocks that are out. Now reach blocks, it's no different. We're going to try and win in the C gap with that reach block, okay? But we got to teach the kids, all right, as they as as the footwork changes and the screws whether you're reading via the net, screws, feet, as that starts to widen its track, we now have to teach them how to try and turn, all right, and steer 
that reach block. So not only do we beat it, but we try and steer it to where we can get the ball back inside. And then eventually versus the base of the drive, all right, now we really don't necessarily want to turn that thing back inside with our hips here because if the ball's in there, we can't make a play. So versus the base drive, what we'd like to do is we'd like to get that separated shock there, all right, and defeat that block with my head in the C-gap so that if the ball does declare inside, I can disengage and make a play. Early on when we're teaching beat and run, uh, reach blocks, we really try to run with the reach and steer it back in so that the ball definitely goes inside of us, but until our defensive ends become better players with not only their block reaction but their block destruction, on the reach blocks, we're not asking that kid to defeat the reach and then fall back inside to make a play. Initially, we just want them to beat the reach and get the ball sent back inside. All right, With a base or a dry block, we want to separate bench press, shock, strike violently, get that thing off of us with our head in the right gap, All right, in the proper C gap, then if the ball declares, I can disengage and go in. But you got to remember now, if we get that out block from there, our lion's going to be a B-gap player. All right, so on this side, okay, we get an out block there, our ram is going to fit and spill all ISO blocks back into B-gap. So now if we get out blocks or reach blocks, we're C-gap players with the ends, and we're B-gap players, all right, with our ram and our line. So when we keep things that simple with the kids, we get, we get consistent run fits off of block reaction and stimulus, okay? Now, the one that you really got to work on, all right, in order to gain an extra guy and not lose a player is the hinge pull scheme. So when you get a hinge pull scheme, what's going to start is on the hinge block, it's going to look like a beer release at first, and your end's going to think that he can chase, and now your stack's going to think that he can replace, all right? But what happens is, when they're running power or anything else that involves a pull and a hinge, now when we get that pull sitting there, all right, that hinge block eventually is going to turn into an out block on, on the end. So he's going to hinge first, but then as he settles back, the end can't chase that anymore because he's going to get blocked by the tackle. So we have to start with real small vision first, see a little, see a lot, and then we've got to get these stack backers to be able to see the block of the tackle and the movement of the guard. So now when we get this scheme, all right, as we start to stack and we think we're going to stack the end, wait a minute, puller, now we got to run. All right, so we start off with base drive blocks and inside beer releases, and then we progress to hinge pull schemes. And from there, we really don't do a lot else in, the run, in, in our block reaction recognition, all right, with our ends and our stacks. We tell them, these are the three things that you're going to get the most. These are the three things we've got to defend. When we see them, we want to make sure that we react properly, and we want to make sure that once we react, all right, we can now do it in a physical, violent manner to get rid of blocks, destruct blocks, all right, beat blockers, and make tackles. We try to keep it that simple, and it works really good for our kids, okay? With the nose and the mic now, all right, what we're basically doing with the nose and the mic is we send the nose on every play, all right, and if it's a one-back team, we'll send them away from the back, all right, so that if we think we're getting a lot of zone schemes, we know that the nose is probably going to get help from the backside. So if we send them away from the back on the zone, we feel like we can get the nose one-on-one -on -one with the center. And now if our nose can beat the center or penetrate front side, we know that the, that the, the zone play for us will go back to our chase play. So normally in one back, we're going to send them away. And then our mic is going to read the A-gap away from the side that he sent the nose. And he's basically going to play the backside A-gap away from the nose. okay, And he's going to play that on every block except a pull away from him, all right? So with our Mike linebacker, we don't really get into the flow of the back, tight flow, wide flow, okay? We tell our Mike linebacker to play the backside A-gap, okay, of the nose. And if any block comes up or out, we're going to play that A-gap and find the football. Any block that pulls, all right, we're going to stop rock. And now if we got a pull from this guard here, the guard that I'm reading, our Mike linebacker would then, all right, Run, run read steps here, guard pull, start to go, and now based on what we did with the tackle, all right, tackle is flat, our mic is going to run over the top, okay, down lock, pull, tackle flat, we're going to go over the top. If the tackle is high, we're going to go underneath. So if for whatever reason that tackle is climbing and working at a higher angle, our mic linebacker is now going to go read. Pull under, all right, and he'll plug underneath, all right, and obviously that's where the play off the hinge block pull, now that backside ram linebacker, the play him is very important, 
right? Because if the mic fits it downhill under, he might have to go over the top of the mic. If the mic fits it versus a flat scheme and the mic runs, all right, he's probably got to fit it and plug that back side. So that takes a little bit of work, but the first thing is block recognition. Block recognition. See those blocks and then talk about all the nuances after that. Get them responding and reacting to blocks the same way every time they see it. Get them looking at the right keys, then worry about all that stuff after that. Okay, so our nose and our mic are just basically the two A-gap players. All right, we have a ninth grade mic playing in the spring right now that's going to be a good player. When I teach him, I literally teach him how to read the guard. That's all I have him look at, opposite the way he sends them. If the guard is up or out, I'm asking him to get downhill and plug that A-gap as quick as he can. All right. The only thing I ask him to see is a guard pull. If a guard pulls, now we've got to be able to stop and run either over the top or plug based on the departure angle or the climb of the tackle. Okay. So when we do that with our players, with our front six, okay, we are playing all right, with our front six, we are playing C gap to C gap in a consistent, fast, physical manner. All right, and we're trying to build that flat wall and get the ball to do other things, but not crease us. Okay, in those C gap to C gap gap. All right, C gap to C gap vertically. Don't get creased. Create that flat wall. All right, that's really all we're trying to do. Okay, and we try to keep that really, really simple. The front six. When we play base defense, the front six and most of in all of the base coverages, not movements, not man, not anything else, in the base coverages, whether we play quarters, whether we play two read, whether we play three by one adjustments, our front six will fit all runs the same in the box. And that's one of the reasons I went to this. All right, if you're not a fan of that, that's fine. If you want to teach different run fits for different coverages, that's fine. My six guys in the box, even if they're removed a little bit, like I'll talk about the back end of the coverage. He's bumped out a little bit. He still reads the same thing and plays the same gap. We don't change the reads in base defense for the down three and the back three. All right, because with the kids we have here and the coaching staff I have here, it's much easier for us to read the same thing, play the same thing, keep our coverages to where we don't have to make run fit adjustments until we start to pressure, move, play man-to-man. -man. Then things change a little bit. And our stack base defense, the reason we do it this way, is it gives us the best chance to fit runs and play runs. Okay? A little bit different for us maybe than, than most people. We play all of our same split field coverages on the back end. The mic is not involved in any of our coverages. All right, The mic is a secondary contained pull-up quarterback player, spy if you want to call him that. He is not in any of our coverages, so we play all of our standard split field coverages behind the 3-3 three, three stack without the mic, which leaves us seven guys in coverage. One back with the back set here, we would set this. Okay, this would be rip. Palms, if you watch any of our other videos, to read. All right, this side would be palms. So now with the rip call, the right safety's down. He tells the Ram linebacker, I'm down, I'm down. Let's the Ram know to stay in the box. That makes the Ram linebacker the three dropper. Okay, that makes uh, the right safety, all right, what we call, okay, swing deep of number three. Okay, all right, or we call him to make it real easy for our kids. We just tell him, hey, you're the three dropper, you're the palms dropper. So this kid knows when he's a palm dropper, all right? Two doesn't cross my face. All right, I've done this on other videos. Three doesn't out leverage me. So anybody that's a palm dropper knows two doesn't cross my face, three doesn't out leverage me. Anybody that's a three dropper knows that I drop wider tight based on a release of three. Three wide, I push wider. Three tight, I drop tighter. Three vertical, I got to play three vertical. All right, so three dropper, palms dropper. Now on this side, this is our palms dropper because there's no safety next to him to tell him I'm down, I'm down. So this is going to be the RPO side. This is the side you're going to take advantage of this kid having to fit into the B-gap. All right, so you have to understand this will be the side. We try to set the free safety to the side of the back to alleviate the RPOs because now this guy has nowhere to go. He's a B-gap fitter, and he doesn't have to be out there in coverage because he's out there in coverage. So we try to alleviate some of the RPOs with that. We know we're going to get some coming back. Have to be able to change coverages. Also, have to be able to play some man. All right, but at the same time, the very next thing that I'm going to talk about is how we can alleviate some of that a little bit by going to the tight front. Okay, so when we go to the tight front, we're not going to change anything with the run fits. We're just going to kind of predetermine the run fits for them. 
So in other words, when we go to the tight front, we put the end and the anchor in four knots, so now we're inside out here. All right, and now we walk the stack outside a little bit. Okay. The only difference we make when we go to when we go all right to tight front is we go from a base coverage deal to a, what we call a joker coverage deal. All right, that lets our kids know that we're in something different. Okay. So the front. We go to we stay head up here. We go to four eyes. We now bump the, the apex. All right, line and ram are both bumped out a little bit, but they're not B gap players anymore. The B gaps already played, so they know they're C gap players. They know their quarterback players an option. They can remove a little bit. Now what we have to do that's different is both safeties. All right, both down safeties have to be on the hash mark, and they're both playing palms coverage. Okay, so both down safeties are now on the hash mark. There, there is no rip or Liz call to put one of them down with the free seat. All right, they're they're both on the hash mark playing palms coverage versus two by two. All right, the difference for us is the free safety becomes that joker player, and now he's going to set himself to the back, and now he's just going to say joker right. Okay, so our free safety would say joker right, and he would set himself. Sorry, make it look a little bit more realistic. Our free safety would set himself there and he would say joker right. Okay? That doesn't change anybody else in the coverage, all right? It just lets us know he's the three dropper to the side of the back. He knows he's got to be on the side of the back, all right? We just alert him, hey, joker right, joker right, so that our guys know where he's going to be to fit the alley. All right? So our guys now know that he's going to be between the mic and the ram to fit the alley. He won't be between the mic and the line because he's on the right side. Okay? So now in the tight front, essentially, the end and the anchor become B gap players. All right? It's already predetermined in that front. We still send the nose and we'll send them away from the back, and the mic will still read the backside A gap. Okay, but now your apexes are already C gap players. So now we have the A, B, C gaps play the exact same way, all right, we used to play. All right, and the reads are a little bit simpler now because I know I'm gonna be a C gap player. The only thing I'm looking for is if I get hinge possible pull, I may have to run a little bit faster to fall in. Okay, but right now all these blocks are going to be down, veer, whatever they're going to be on the 4i, scoop, all right? I'm going to be a C-gap quarterback player, and then I'm going to fall behind everything there. All right, I'm going to be a C-gap player and fall behind everything there. All right, now the difference is this now makes both apex players what we would call palm droppers. So now instead of one apex player being a three dropper and one apex player being a palm dropper, when we go to joker coverage, they're both palm droppers. The free safety now becomes the number three drop. So the free safety now has to revert, and then at three pushes, the free safety is the one that's got to push the coverage. All right, so now the palms dropper would push if three went wide. The, the three dropper, the free safety would push and work to find a new number three. Okay, so we're playing the same palms coverage. We're saying we're playing the same gaps. All right, this is essentially all right from our base static defense. If we got if we got both sides down blocking or veer blocking or inside veer releasing and both ends were, eight, were B gap players and both stacks were C gap stack players, that's basically what's happening right now in this front. You can almost assume that this was just like a veer release. He's already in the B gap plane. He's already in the B gap plane. They're not going to play another gap. They're not going to cross face. They're not moving in our base defense. They already know they're B gap players. I'm a C gap quarterback player. Okay, or I'm a cutback fall behind player. That's all I can really do. My free safety, who's the three dropper in palms, will now run me out. So that's how we gain an extra defender to fall behind. If this, if this run, for whatever reason, were to cut back and come back out here, I would expect the free safety to fill the alley inside of the mic and where that ram linebacker is. All right. If three were to go vertical down the middle of the field, I would love the free safety to play three vertical. Okay, so when we go to this front, we don't change the run fits. The run fits, other than the nose and the mic making movement and a read, the, the run fits for the end, the anchor, and, and the, the line and the ram are predetermined. That's as easy as we make it for those kids. Yes, it's a little bit more involved in that when you get to the next level, okay? For us, in the 3-3 stack with how we play it and when we use the tight front as a changeup, that's as easy as we keep it for our kids. Now we tell the line and the ram, look, you're already C-gap players, all right? Try to hang for RPO stuff. Don't fall back inside. There's no gap for you to play. Don't disappear inside. Hang out a little bit wider to help us with RPO stuff. We really go to man free and 
other other man coverages to take away RPOs, but this will help us a little bit in the RPO game. This will help put us in a position to play a better quarterback. Maybe that's a little bit more athletic. At least we'll have better leverage on them than chasing them sometimes from inside out. Okay, and then the other thing is if teams, for whatever reason, all right, if they start running like midline theories where they arc this guy out for the for the the ram and they down block up to the mic and they read this and this is a squeeze player if the quarterback then pulls the ball the alley player is the guy that we really need in the defense and he's coming from inside out of the ram so even if they get the ram turned out which a lot of teams will start to do they'll turn him out and bring the quarterback up under and now we've got the alley player sitting right in there okay so it's a change up for us we like it for a lot of reasons it makes it gives us the ability with our three safety system to actually show three safeties high and then spin to different coverages, whether it be a joker coverage, all right, or maybe a Tampa 2 look. Okay, we can get to different coverages with our three safety high alignment. All right, because when we play our base stack front, we're a true split field coverage, middle of the field open team. This coverage gives us more of a middle of the field closed type deal that we really like it as an adjustment. Biggest thing for us is we don't change the run fits. We make the run fits even easier than it was in the stack because there's really not much to read. A gap and A gap with the nose and the mic. B gap, B gap with the end and the anchor. C gap, C gap, or C gap fall in. All right, cutback player. Alley by the three dropper. The palms players play the run and all their pass coverage is the way they always play. Okay, so we were really good in the stack last year. We went to bare front on some pressures. We moved guys a little bit, but the stack was really the only base front we played. We we slanted to even or over or under fronts, but we never lined up in them. All right, we played bare, but we never went to another front. This is going to give the, us the ability to play another base front with our stack front, with movement to over under and the bare front. So now I think it makes us a little bit, um, a little bit more flexible with our fronts. It makes us a little bit harder to uh, game plan against each week to to say that they're standard three three box. Now you're going to have the game plan to 3-3 three, three box, you're going to have the game plan to tight front, all right, and you're going to have the game plan to movement to over-under, so one more thing the offense has to work on, helps us for spread teams, and we love the fact that it gives us a middle of the field closed slash three high safety look because now we can disguise things a lot better, all right. Uh, tight front has been used in the Big 12, Iowa State did it last year and a half, Texas went to it, a lot of teams are going to it now, playing more hybrid type players behind it, safety linebacker types here. All right, the only, if you study Iowa State or any of the college teams, the only thing you might see slightly different is sometimes in the box they may go, all right, they may bump some guys and go to more of a traditional 3-2 box, all right, and then maybe play different versions of coverage if it's 2-2, two two, all right, maybe they would go to, all right, or on the back side if they bumped it the other way, let's say if the free safety was here and they bumped the line and the mic into a 3-2 box, all right, left the ram, walked out to be a palms player, and maybe, you know, on this side they either locked it or maybe the left safety was down doing something. What I'm saying is on a college level, when you study it, a lot of times in this front you'll see it more as a 3-2 box. Sometimes you'll see it as a 3-1 box, okay? But for us, because we're a 3-3 stack team, I don't ever want to get my kids into that look for my line and my ram and my mic because it changes what they're looking at and what they're reading. So we just stay with our... Traditional 3-3 stack, widen out. They have to widen out when they're playing palms anyway, so that's not unnatural for them or different for them. Now we're just making their reads a lot simpler and they can play a little bit faster. All right, so I hope that helps if you're an on-front team, if you're a 3-3 stack team, how we fit our runs. If you're a 3-3 stack team, how to add the, add the, uh, um, sorry, add the tight front to your package. All right, guys, I appreciate all of you uh, for watching these videos and subscribing to the channel. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll check you guys out next time.